Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Srimad Bhagavatam playlist. It's exactly two months. Ah, long gap. But here we start again. So finally, we have reached the eighth verse of the first chapter of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. There are thousands and thousands of verses and we have just finished eight. No problem. <laughs> All right, so we were discussing that how Sut Goswami had been requested by the sages of Naimi Sharanya that you please speak the divine knowledge that you heard from Sukhdev Goswami, who is the son of Vyas Dev. Complicated. <laughs> and now we will see how the sages are giving, uh, listing down the necessary qualifications for Sud Goswami, of Sud Goswami actually, or I would say for anybody to be uh, having the authority to speak a scripture like the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is very well uh, ascertained in this verse, because all these sages like Shonak Rishi and the others, they are giving this qualification to Sud Goswami, and actually he's already qualified. They are just uh, reinstantiating it again. So what is that which makes him so qualified to speak on the subject matter? That is something which we will discuss in this verse today. It's a very important verse. It's one of the first 10 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. As I have said before also, I am saying it again, these verses are very important because they set the tone, the trend, the mood and the mission of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And therefore, we must read these verses again and again and again and again. No hurry, no skipping, no shortcuts. All right, so let us start. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Agyanti Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha The ninth verse from, uh, sorry, the eighth verse from the first canto, first chapter is here. Veta Tvam Somya Tat Sarvam Tatva Vatas Tat Anugrihat the translation is as follows. And because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. Therefore, you can tell us all that you have scientifically learned from them. So here basically, uh, Shona Krishi and the other sages, they are not only referring to the fact that he, uh, that Sud Goswami had listened from Sukhdev Goswami or from Sukhdev Goswami's father like Vyasdev or from somebody else, but uh, he, they are illustrating a general principle here, which is true for him at every level and for everybody else who aspires to be like him. Read it again. Because you are submissive, your spiritual masters, he doesn't say Sukhdev Goswami or Vyasdev. Okay? He says your spiritual masters. That means they are referring to every body, to each and every guru of Sud Goswami. The purport is as follows. The secret of success in spiritual life is in satisfying the spiritual master. And thereby getting his sincere blessings. Should I repeat? The secret of success in spiritual life is in satisfying the spiritual master and thereby getting his sincere blessings. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur has sung in his most, in his famous eight stanzas on the spiritual master as follows. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master. Only by his satisfaction can one please the, please the personality of Godhead. 
and when he is dissatisfied, there is only havoc on the path of spiritual realization. It is essential, therefore, that a disciple be very much obedient and submissive to the bona fide spiritual master. Srila Sut Goswami fulfilled all these qualifications as a disciple. And therefore, he was endowed with all favors by the learned and self-realized spiritual masters such as Srila Vyasadev and others. The sages of Naimisharanya were confident that Srila Sut Goswami was bona fide. Therefore, they were anxious to hear from him. My God, it's an amazing verse. All right, so who is Vishwanath, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur? Oh, well, let's first discuss the other statement. The first statement of the book. The secret of success in spiritual life is in satisfying the spiritual master and thereby getting his sincere blessings. So many times people think that spiritual progress is, uh, is, uh, is obtained. No, you, you cannot obtain spiritual progress. You cannot get it. It has to be awarded. Spiritual uh, elevation is awarded. It cannot be obtained. You cannot... Uh, do certain number of mantras or sutras or mudras or tantras or you cannot read thousand scriptures, thousand shlokas, you cannot visit thousand holy places and you cannot, you, you, you can't do any of these things to be elevated spiritually. Ultimately, when God decides to give that to you, only then you get it. It's like a prize, right? So, now, that does not mean we don't do all of these activities which I mentioned. It means that we do them, but doing that is not sufficient. Just by doing that, we cannot demand that, oh, I must advance spiritually. That We cannot place that demand. All right. In fact, it's the opposite. Read the purport again. And because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. So, this is the most important secret to success in spiritual life is to satisfy the spiritual master and thereby get his sincere blessings so how the trajectory is in spiritual life first we obey the instructions of the guru and when we obey the instructions and follow the orders of the guru then when the Guru is pleased by our efforts, we may not be successful in the first attempt. When I say that we follow, it doesn't mean that we are literally successful in, what, uh, in following what he wants from us. But at least as a first attempt when we try. And then when we keep trying, keep trying and eventually we come up to that standard. Then the spiritual master blesses us from the heart. And when the spiritual master gives his blessings from the heart, only then we can advance in our spiritual life. Because when the spiritual master is pleased, God is pleased. Because he is a representative of God. All right. So, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, who is he? He is one of the famous Acharyas in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. He had written... A very famous uh, the eight stanzas, it's known as Guru Vashtakam. All right, so in that he says, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master. Only by his satisfaction can one please the personality of God. Well, this is not uh, only relevant for today, this, this has been relevant for all time to come, and even in the past, for everybody, in fact. Even when Vishnu personally takes avatars in human forms, then also he illustrates this principle. Like for example, the classic example is of Lord Ram and Krishna, of course. <clears throat> but in case of Lord Ram, what happened? He had gone to the ashram of Rishi Vashisht and he stayed there. And then later on, Vishwamitra Muni came and took him to kill these uh, demons, you know, Tarka, Subahu, and then Marich was thrown ahead long, long, many, many miles outside. And then Agastya Rishi, then so many Rishis, my God. 
who I wonder if there is any Rishi who Lord Ram has not visited. So Lord Ram, he illustrated this principle of the, the illustrated the relationship between a guru and the disciple. Same is with Krishna, you know, he was in the ashram of Sandipani Muni. And therefore, when, when the spiritual master is pleased by our, our efforts, only then we get, we, we elevate ourselves spiritually. So it is not that by whimsically doing something which we like, uh, we, we become advanced spiritually. So for example, there was uh, one person I still remember. So he had asked me that uh, this Dhruva Maharaj had chanted, you know, uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So he said, uh, so he said, actually I'm planning to, you know, reinvent the mantra, make it a bit more, you know, attractive. I said, yes. How do you plan to do that? He said, how about I chant like this? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namah. I said, no, there's Rasa Bhas in this. Well, what's Rasa Bhas? We'll discuss some other time. But there's a ex, there's a there's an incompatibility of Rasas in saying Nama at the end like this. And I said, no, you should not do like this. You should follow what Narad Muni said to Thuva Maharaj. He did not say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Nama. He said Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That's it. Do not concoct, do not add, do not subtract, do not modify. Just keep it as it is. And then later on, this person messaged me, Oh, you said big things will happen in my life. You know, I'll become more happier. Or nothing has happened. I said, are you chanting the mantra that I gave? Yeah, I'm chanting the modified mantra. So I said, if you keep chanting, you know, modified mantras, you will also get modified results, you know. <laughs> so modification doesn't work in spiritual life. In fact, it's not required at all. Whatever is spoken, just follow. It's very simple, crystal clear. No doubts, no clarifications, no questions, no discussions, no argument. Nothing is required. Everything is there. We just have to follow. Now, this does not mean we do not ask questions. As in the Bhagavad Gita, we see Krishna answers patiently so many questions which Arjuna asks. But Arjuna's questions were in a mood of humility and submissiveness. So nowadays you will see there are many uh, videos, especially in YouTube on, you know, many fancy topics like, you know, religion, spirituality, you know, culture, tradition, these, that, blah, 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 Hindu, Muslim, Christian, you know, Judaism, why this, this is like this, why that is like that, what should be done if it is like this, what should be done if it was like that, all right? So there you will see, there's a, you know, many times you will see, you know, there's one person sitting and then one arrogant speaker from the crowd is, you know, asking questions. Yeah, I kind of agree, but I kind of disagree. I, you know, you know, it's like this, you know, it's like that. Actually, you know, but you know, but you know, but. So you will see many videos in YouTube like this. And at the end, what happens with these videos is the people are also watching these videos not to get some enlightenment because they are just enjoying the masala, the filthy, disgusting, useless debate which these people keep doing. All right, so. The thing is, if we keep debating and arguing and barking like you know, dogs with our gurus, then the, the, we are far way behind in spiritual progress, right? So sometimes people think that by testing the guru, by insulting or not, not directly, of course, nobody will directly insult the guru, but by doing things which the guru doesn't like, we will we, we will still advance, you know. I am God and there is nobody in between. Nobody is needed. Throw the Guru out. Well, it's not like that. Imagine if Dhruva Maharaj needed a Guru. What to speak of us? Imagine Dhruva Maharaj, you know. Satya Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga. I mean, you know, just imagine that time. You know, I mean, Vishnu had sent Narad Muni. And imagine what's the predicament of the people of Kali Yuga, the situation is so precarious. 
So in this day and age, when we claim that we will do everything ourselves, you know, the guru is not required, and you know, we can do whatever we want, of course. And then we go on doing things arrogantly without any lack of, without any submission or any surrender or any faith. We are just doing. Many times people ask me that, how many exact number of mantras I have to chant for this thing or for that? So you know, so they think that uh, mantras are also like you know, some like some programming scripts. You know, you write ten lines and then there is an output. They think it's like that. Well, it's not like that, All right? So that is a very crucial factor. And because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. So we must be gentle and submissive. Therefore, you can tell us all that you have scientifically learned from them. Right? So we have to understand the, the most important thing when we are uh, having conversations with our gurus is that we have to realize that we are a fool. We are foolish. We don't know anything. We are just blabbering, chapar, 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 like this. But we actually don't know anything. We have zero knowledge of what's going on. These are very high truths, very lofty principles. You know, spiritual progress, you know, soul, elevation, God. These are like, these are beyond matter. So by presenting technical arguments, you know, logical or scientific arguments, even sometimes religious arguments people give you. Or, or any kind of arguments, you know, we, 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 can, we can make zero progress. I have seen so many people in the last 10, 15 years. I've seen people who are very intelligent, very smart, very beautiful, very attractive, and very knowledgeable. They know so many things. But there's this one small problem which they have and that ruins everything else. What is that? The conception that I know it. And that prevents them from getting mercy. Because then they think, I know it, you know. According to me, in my opinion, it should be like this, it should be like that. Ah, that's not correct, you know. In my opinion, I think this should be like this. Well... In spiritual life, the opinion of the Guru is at the topmost priority. Because the Guru can see from his level of perception of spiritual elevation that what we are doing is so stupid and it's nonsense. <laughs> so then the Guru can correct us. And nowadays, many times uh, when, uh, when the Guru even corrects the disciple, people don't like it. All right? So... We have to learn that we have to develop these qualities. Why do you think that these things are mentioned in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam? Why not somewhere in the middle, like there are 18,000 verses? Uh, maybe somewhere in the 8th canto, you know, after around uh, 9,000, 10,000 verses had gone. Then these verses could have been mentioned. By what? But why in the universe is it mentioned now? In the beginning? Because... Without these things, you cannot understand what is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. You simply cannot understand. You simply, you will waste your and every, you will waste your time basically. And you will set a bad example for everybody else. Alright, so these are fundamental principles for any spiritual path. I don't care what your religion is. If you want any kind of higher knowledge, either you are a Hindu or a Muslim or a Christian or a Jain or a Buddhist or whoever you are, according to your passport, I mean. <laughs> passport, there is a place, right? Religion, so and so. So it, it actually doesn't matter which religion you belong to, but these are some universal spiritual truths which we have to realize. All right. Otherwise, our spiritual progress will be very, very, very shallow. Have you seen that uh, you know, shallow things? Have you met shallow people especially? Everything is shallow. Everything is superficial. Oh, you know, it's like this. I tasted Italian. I tasted Spanish. I can speak 
German, I can speak French, I, I know this, I know that. But what's there on the cards at the end of the day? At the end of the day, are you, are you happy? Well, no happiness, only misery. <laughs> Just running from this to that, from one home to one person to the other. All right, so the point here is that these are very, very, very crucial. These two principles, gentleness and humility, submissiveness. That is very important that we learn to be submissive. Otherwise, there's no hope for us. All right. We can be reading thousands of shlokas. We may be memorizing a million verses and doing thousands of padyatras, going to places like Vindavan, Mathura, Ayodhya, or Jerusalem, or Makkah, wherever. And we may be chanting billions of rounds of any mantra. You know, and we may be doing so many things. But if we lack submissiveness and gentleness in front of our gurus, then our spiritual future is dark. All right. But no worries, it's better late than never. <laughs> that is why these verses are there in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that we understand the importance of these qualities. Okay? So this will help us to accept the message of the Srimad Bhagavatam as it is. Without any adulteration, without any mixture, direct point to point, no discussions, no confusions and no arguments. <laughs> but if these points are not there in, in our base, in our consciousness, then we cannot study the Srimad Bhagavatam. Nigama galpator galitam phalam sukha mukhat amrita davya samyatam. That the Srimad Bhagavatam, as we read this verse in the previous verses, you know, <coughs> that it is even more sweeter when it uh, when it came out of the mouth of Sukhdev Goswami. Yes, but Sukhdev Goswami also heard very submissively from his father, the great sage Vyasdev, and he had heard this from his great, great, great guru Narad Muni, and Narad Muni also had heard this submissively from Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma had directly heard it from Lord Vishnu himself. Tene Brahma Hidaya di Kavaye Muhyanti Yat Surayaha Tejo Vari Midam Yatha Vinimayo Yatra Trisargomisa Dham Nam Suena Sadan Nidasta Kuhakam Satyam Paramadhimahi. That's the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So now you know from where this is coming. This is not ordinary knowledge. This is not something which has to be just heard and taken cheaply. All right, so let us take this very seriously and elevate our consciousness and change our lives all right thank you very much for your patience and uh, thank you very much for sharing my videos with others and if you have not shared it please share this and if you like this video click the thumbs up and uh, also subscribe to my channel if you have not and if you want a consultation from me then you can go down to the description section of my videos where you will find the link to my website and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and uh, no we also have to be submissive only then if we look he will appear all right thank you so much wish you all the best